Good morning. So today we will learn about common specimen in obstetrics. This is the specimen of anencephaly. You can appreciate that the vault of the skull is missing. So there is no vault. Then the eyes are protruded and the tongue can be seen projecting out. It's visible that the tongue is also coming out. So this is a specimen of anencephaly and definitely termination is the only treatment which was done. This is also specimen of anencephaly where vault of the skull is missing is very nicely visible. It this is the specimen of an abortus of around 16 weeks where the spine was seen opening. So that was the reason why she got a second domestic abortion done. So in anencephaly, what is the earliest time by which this can be diagnosed? So it is as early as 16 weeks. What are the other common anomalies that are associated? So it is spina bifida, hydronephrosis, cleft lip and omphalocele. The percentages are shown. Most commonly, uh, when these patients are coming in late trimester, then you can see that many times they come only with polyhydramnios. So, what are the causes of polyhydramnios in cases of an anencephaly? This may be present in 35% of the patients. Here, there is diminishing in the swallowing. In some of the fetuses, even esophageal atresia is present. Then, because the meninges is open, there is secretion of the CSF into the amniotic fluid. And there is absence of the pituitary gland. Therefore, the antidiuretic hormone is not secreted. And there is excessive dilute urine which is passed. So, the excessive micturation is also the cause. How do you manage such patients? Now, anencephaly is lethal. And these sonographic findings are highly reliable. The on diagnosis termination is the only management. What are the complications which can be seen in mother? Now these complications are mostly related to when it is a case of a polyhydramnios. So it could be polyhydramnios, poly preterm labor, malpresentation, postpartum hemorrhage and even uh, post dated pregnancy in some. Once a patient has uh, anencephaly, her normal query will be like what are the chances of recurrence so the chances of recurrence are five percent if one child is affected and if the history repeats twice then the chances are 13 percent now how do you prevent uh, neural tube defects in the next pregnancy so the answer is periconceptional folic acid four milligrams daily now though in the market the fold white which is available is a five milligram tablet now here, this is a specimen of placenta as you can see, the glistening shining surface with the fetal cord attached to it. So the common questions asked, describe the specimen, so it is a specimen along with the membranes and the umbilical cord. What is a normal placenta? It is a disc like structure having two surfaces, fetal and maternal. The maternal surface will be showing cotyledons irregular. The surface is glistening on which the cord is attached. This is the fetal surface. A placenta is normally 500 grams in weight or one fifth of the weight of the body of the fetus. If the fetal weight is 2500, the cord will be something, uh, the placenta is like 500 grams. 
it is 15 to 20 centimeters in diameter in the center it is thick and it is around 2.5 centimeter what are the various functions of placenta it works like almost all the tracts of no, all the systems in the body like a respiratory function oxygen is transferred from the mother's circulation to fetus and carbon dioxide from fetus to the maternal circulation the functions of nutritive functioning like a git so transfer of water electrolytes min minerals vitamins glucose to the fetus excretory function functioning like the kidney so the excretion of urea creatinine uric acid from the fetus to the maternal circulation it also has endocrine functions production of hormones are acting as a barrier uh, membrane also produces enzyme and has immunological functions what are the causes of a large placenta in case of diabetes in rh negative when there is erythroblastosis fetalis in multiple pregnancy when there are uh, more fetus then the placenta is also big what are the causes of small placenta intrauterine growth retardation then preterm labor what is the normal length of the umbilical cord the normal length is around 50 centimeters what is when it is called a short cord when it is less than 20 centimeter it is known as a short cord what is the importance of a true knot presence of true knot usually cannot compress the fetal vessels due to presence of the water's jelly but if the water's jelly is also less as in cases of IUGR or post term the other problems can arise and what is a false knot false knot is the heaping of water's jelly and folding of the vessels here in this specimen you can see that there is the true knot this is a specimen of placenta along with umbilical cord. The fetal surface is seen and in the umbilical cord a true knot is also present. So that is knotting of the umbilical cord. This is the maternal surface of the placenta where the cotyledons can be seen which are well defined this is now this is a specimen of <coughs> a ruptured uterus here this is the fundus there is the cervix and this is the anterior surface which is showing a rent when it comes to common specimens so this is a cesarean uh, hysterectomy specimen which is done for ruptured uterus what are the causes of ruptured uterus during pregnancy? Now, during pregnancy, almost all cases of a previously scarred uterus, previous curettage, which has been carried out very enthusiastically or has inadvertently perforated or the myometrium is torn. Manual removal, history of manual removal of placenta, congenital anomaly of the uterus, and very rarely. It could be a perforating mole or a placenta accreta. Then what are the causes of rupture during labor? Now this is uh, the time when you are conducting a labor or the patient has come in labor and you are expecting rupture. So obstructed labor with cephalopelvic disproportion, hydrocephalus head, malpresentation, say a hand prolapse transverse lie, wherever there has been misuse of oxytocin. It's a high parity, unrecognized injury to uterine wall, trauma due to instrumental delivery or manual removal of the placenta. This is a specimen of vesicular mole, grape-like structures. Now the grape-like structures can be seen. So this is a classical specimen of vesicular mole. The common questions are what is vesicular mole? This is a partly proliferative of trophoblastic cells and partly degenerative of mesodermal element. 
so it's a disease which is which is partly proliferative and, and partly degenerative what are the symptoms of the patients with the vesicular mole amenorrhea usually may be of two or three months here there is exaggerated vomiting vaginal discharge which could be continuous bleeding or intermittent bleeding brownish discharge bloody discharge abdominal pain and this pain is because of rapid increase in the size of the uterus colicky due to starting of the expulsion and sudden or severe perforation of the mole what are the clinical signs of these patients the patients may have preeclampsia in first trimester in around 12% of the patients features of hyperthyroidism because the tsh represent uh, almost uh, mimics the structure of uh, hcg uterus is larger in size in 50% of the cases fetal heart is absent even at 26 weeks you cannot actually you cannot hear bilateral ovaries are enlarged and the molar tissue may be seen coming out from the os so how do you diagnose mostly by symptoms and signs and usg will show multiple echoes that is a snowstorm appearance how you will manage the case suction evacuation what are the investigation that are necessary before carrying out suction and evacuation so a complete blood test beta hcg should be sent and x-ray chest pa view should be taken pelvic ultrasound is of course confirming your diagnosis a thyroid function test when should the oxytocin drip be started now here whenever you want to do the uh, whenever you plan for evacuation oxytocin drip should be commenced uh, started at the commencement of evacuation because the potential of the trophoblastic tissue to disseminate and, and embolize the venous system of the lungs so therefore an x-ray test should be always taken then you will come to know whether the dissemination was occurring previously or it has occurred because of the evacuation how do you follow up in the follow up serial quantitative hcg estimation has to be done hcg is done pre operative 48 hours after evacuation then weekly till the level comes normal then monthly till 6 months for one year during the time when the patient is coming for follow up x ray chest should be done hcg titer should be done pelvic examination should be done to see whether the uterus is involuting normal or not now why all this follow up the risk of recurrence of the vesicular mole is very uh the risk of recurrence is low but this will increase if two molar pregnancies have occurred risk with one is 1 to 2% and risk with two uh, times of vesicular mole is 15 to 25% here in this specimen you can see that there this is a hysterectomy specimen of uh, vesicular mole the whole of the uterus is filled with grape like materials as a result of hydropic degeneration of the villi so just a word on hysterectomy in molar pregnancy now these are indicated when in the older women who have completed the family post molar gtn is 15 to 20% after evacuation and 3 to 5% after hysterectomy uh risk of gtn to develop increases with the age post evacuation hemorrhage sub involution after evacuation whenever there is inadequate hcg decline and if the initial levels of the decline of the hcg is more than 1 lakh international units per ml so it's not that if hysterectomy is done that the neoplasia cannot occur the risk still persists but you take an active step this is specimen of few which is uh, partial salpingectomy has been done there is this is the bluish uh, discolored the hematosalping and this we can see that this is the fimbrial end telling you that this is the tube so this is a specimen of tubal ectopic pregnancy so 
once you have identified that it is a specimen of a lepian tube with unruptured ectopic pregnancy, the questions that would come to you are, what symptoms can be present with ectopic pregnancy? This is amenorrhea, bleeding per vagina, pain in abdomen with or without shock. What are the diagnostic aids? Today on day, ultrasound is the best way to diagnose. Though some use caldocentesis too, that is making, uh, introducing a needle in the pouch of Douglas and drawing out fluids which may be altered brown colored blood. So that is caldocentesis. What is the management of patient with ectopic pregnancy? An exploratory laparotomy is must with patient when the patient is in shock and suspected tubal pregnancy. And a diagnostic lapar laparoscopy or laparotomy should be done when the patient is hemodynamically stable. What are the surgical procedures normally done? If the tube is two-third damaged, salpingectomy is advocated. Otherwise, a salpingostomy means simply making an aperture or a linear uh, scar and drawing out the contents. What are the indications of medical management? The medical management is indicated whenever the sac is less than 3 cm, beta HCG level less than 3000 international units per ml, cardiac activity is absent and the patient is hemodynamically stable. This is a specimen of placenta accreta. Now you can see that this is the uterus. This is a postpartum uterus and the placenta is uh, fixed and this you can also see the small part of the cord of the placenta. So this is a specimen of hysterectomy of a pregnant uterus showing placenta in C2. The placenta appears to be adherent. What would have been the presentations? The patient must have presented with postpartum hemorrhage. What do you think was the cause of PPH? Here placenta appears to be morbidly adherent to the uterine wall. Probably the plane of the cleavage was not found while the separation of placenta. Can the morbid adherence of placenta be diagnosed antenatally? Now that is the point where you can uh, be prophylactic and know the things better. Yes, it is possible and can be diagnosed antenatally by MRI. Here there is absence of the usual sonolucent subplacental space which represents the decidua bacillus. What are the associated factors in this condition? In many of the times when the patient is a case of placenta previa or also having patients of previous scar. So one third of the patients of previous scar could have these presentations. Whenever it is a previous myomectomy patient or history of curatage in the past, they can also be the patients with adherent placenta grand multiparity and when the maternal age is more than 35. I hope you could understand and if so, you could subscribe the channel, drop a like and share. Thank you very much.